Unfortunately, there's no archival footage because I forget what they called those, the tapes they used back in those days, but they self-destructed after a number of years. I forget the technical term of the tape. Uh, it was a nitrate or something, and they self-destructed. But it opened with, it had an effigy of me on a sign hanging outside. You know, this is all on television. And it had an effigy of my face, and it said Club Columbus. And um, so it was basically the nightclub that I, then you come in the club and I'm there with the band. And I had a guest or two, uh, just a little half hour show. It was amazing because it was years later before they ever did it again. Um, because NZBC, they, they weren't into creating personalities or celebrity or whatever. We used what became the newsroom, control room, and in Christchurch, when, when CHTV3 went to air, that was, the control room was, <laughs> it was a tiny little studio. And, um, and we put, we put um, little tables and chairs and, and um, there was enough room to squeeze the band, the invaders in. It was just so exciting because every day was different and that's what I loved about it. I loved the, I mean, I, I always found it very strange that you had to wear light blue shirts on black and white TV to look like you were wearing a whitish sort of gray. And I couldn't wear like, you know, a red shirt or something. It had to be light blue to look white. And, you know, so there's all these little side things that are disciplines, but of course they stay with you. When we recorded She's the Mile, I already had the dance. So that was on Channel 9's bandstand, and I'm doing the mods and on. And so everything stops. <clears throat> and of course, we're lip syncing um, to the record. Then you hear the voice come down from on high from the director says, someone put some lacquer on that idiot's hair. Because <coughs> I was shaking it all up. And uh, yeah, and, uh, and uh, get him to stand still. So I immediately, I tapped the mic and I said, uh, mic on please. And they turned the mic on and I said, um, Mr. Director, I haven't met you, but um, that is my dance. It goes, it goes with the song, it goes with the performance. It's called The Mods Nod. And you may think it's a bit weird, but this is going to be the dance craze of Australia very soon after the stomp. We would rehearse all day would do a dress rehearsal, which was as good often as the show that went straight to air. And then we have like a quick bit of touch up and cool down and check the hair and the clothes and then you're live to air. And that was very exciting. So every night, every week it went live to air, Saturday night. Um, the dancers were fabulous. Um, Pete Sinclair was great. You know, he, would, he was such a pro and he could just deliver the lines. He'd have his little script there and he'd look at it, put it down and go, wow, you know, and no auto cue. Come On was done in a tiny studio, but it was as great as Shindig, Oh Boy, or any of those shows around the world that were all at the time lip synced. They went live. They were just like we were. So it was very exciting being up with what was happening in the world. First of all, there was the lurid go-go dancers. They were so lurid, you know, with their skimpy outfits, of course. And when we think back now to what's going on, just in videos, primetime videos that, that come in from the States, you know, it was, it was so innocent. It was amazing. But Mother of Five of Whangarei used to write into the newspapers complaining about the state of the dress, the movements, which were just terrible, and, and the lyrics in the songs. And I remember Kevin called me into a meeting and said um, that the songs, these songs, these lyrics, they were just getting so lurid and um, drug-oriented, psychedelic. I said, well, it's a psychedelic era. I've just spent two years in the psychedelic era. So he said, we're going to do a more middle-of-the-road show so that we can, like they had a golden opportunity, a segment in it, which could actually, they could use flashback songs so they didn't actually... So in other words, they, they called on the classic hits or solid gold catalogues of radio today in those days instead, and they would play 
one or two hits that had sort of squeaky clean lyrics like downtown, you know, things will be great when you're... But most of the lyrics, the rock stuff went out the door. A series that was axed because it became a political football for a second channel. My name is Ray Columbus, Manurk I called it. John produced it. I hosted it, it was my series. And I did something that I don't normally do on television, before or since, which was comedy, musical comedy mostly. And we had famous people like Peter Snell, um, Murray Helberg, both nights now, uh, Max Cryer, um, Pete Sinclair, Rob Muldoon. Basically, the newspaper interests in, tele in media in New Zealand basically said, if this is the sort of garbage that NZBC TV, or TV New Zealand, or NZBC TV was, was called though in those days, I can't remember, going to serve up with the second channel, forget it, let it go to private enterprise. Now, up until then, the director of programs um, had loved the show. I got personal letters from him saying he loved it. And we already knew it was rating great. The public loved it. But as soon as it got slammed as a political football, it was taken off after five shows. We shot about 10 and only five went to air. But a year later we won, within that same year, we won the Kensington Carpet, Sunday News Award, a public vote for the most popular light entertainer on TV. Tom Parkinson said to me, I'd like you to do a country series. And I said, the country and Western fans and the musicians and clubs in New Zealand will never accept Ray Columbus hosting a country music show. He said, well, we can fix that. He said, so you would be interested? And I said, only on two grounds. One, if it's a variety show, it must be presented like a variety show and we feature all the subspecies of country, from western to blues to rock and roll to rockabilly, that we feature all those subspecies, country pop, country rock, and, um, but basically it's set in a country setting, but it's done like a big variety show. We open and close with a finale, everyone on stage at the same time, at beginning and end. We sold it to the Nashville Network and it was on three times a week for 48 weeks in, in the 80s. And um, it was one of the proudest moments of my life because um, I've been, we'd done seven series by this time and uh, we condensed them down into, you know, 48 programs to fit the, the uh, schedule over there on the Nashville Network, which was cable. But I was getting fan mail from America. I had job offers from America. Um, and it was, you know, it was great. I've had, you know, I had a very good career. I still love TV and I've been offered a, a, a thing on cable that I'm considering at the moment. I was offered it last year, but I couldn't speak well enough after my stroke. I still get a wee bit stilted, but, um, but the halcyon days, I'm just so proud that A, I was at a, amongst the wonder of it and learnt it while everyone else was learning it. So I suppose a lot of flaws were covered up, I don't know. You know, I'm a vaudevillian basically, a modern day vaudevillian, and uh, TV gave me a chance to exploit that. Thank you, TV.